Greetings and welcome to another model building workshop. I am Mr. Allen coming to you on behalf of the Community Libraries of Providence, Smith Hill location in particular. But I'm here in my uh, basement workshop here in Providence, Rhode Island. And today we're going to look at this guy, the Armored Car SD KFZ 234-3. And what that is, it's a it's an eight-wheeled armored car, and there's a whole series of these that the Germans put out during World War II. And in this case, the slash three means it's got this uh, short-barreled 75-millimeter um, support gun on this particular variation of this armored car. So this is an armored car that had a uh, lot of innovations for the 1930s, 40s, that being it's got a driver in the front, and a driver in the back so it could go either direction it's got eight wheels you know and it could steer and go in both directions and this particular one has the uh the support howitzer here this is to add a little extra punch to infantry and uh, grenadier units you know and reconnaissance groups because now you've got a, a small cannon which had been uh, originally used in the panzer IV in 1939 in the early stages of the war which was quickly deemed um, kind of obsolete in the uh, tank versus tank battles. So not wasting anything, the Germans just kind of used these guns and other types of roles as the war went on, ending up here. So it makes an armored car, which was originally armed with like a 20 millimeter cannon and a machine gun. And through these different variations, you, you know, now you got one here. So this is an old Tester's Atelier kit. I used to love these kits and the boxings because look at the fun photos you'd get. And it used to give you a whole instruction sheet, an additional instruction sheet on how to do the weathering. So these are back from the, uh, I guess the 1980s when they put this, this series out. So this thing's been sitting around a while. I yeah, don't see the date on it, but I'm, just, I'm thinking the 1980s. I thought they were... Yeah, 18, 1983. Tester's Atelier. Yeah. Yeah. So, I am currently in the process of building this, and I thought this might be fun to uh, show you guys some of this well, as it's in process. So, this is where I am at the moment with it, and I'll try to update you as I go along. So... And please forgive my washing machine. It's a weekend and I'm multitasking. So, there are pros and cons of this old Atelier kit. So I'm working on getting the interior. There's another driving uh, wheel that's going to be over here, which I'm going to paint. I'm going to try to paint a lot of this now before I continue further on because I want to get these interior details. But one thing I figured out kind of after the fact, now that I'm building this, because this is fun to build, I'm not going to lie. I'm enjoying this quite a bit. But I didn't do a lot of research on this when I just picked it off my um, my pile, my stash here. just decided I'm going to build this today. Uh, I didn't really do a lot of research on it, which I usually do. Well, to be fair, I did a lot of research on the painting and markings. But I didn't do a lot on the layout and stuff like that. So the interior of this is pretty inaccurate. So for those of you that are very detail and accuracy um, minded, this has got a lot of problems. Uh, I noticed that when I went online, you know, after I'd already done the assembly and started looking up things about this, I started looking at um, like the instructions and so forth for the Dragon models version of this armored car. And, uh, and there's definitely improvements with that kit. That said, there does seem to be a lot of discussion about this particular vehicle online about certain accuracy issues because even the ones that are still around in museums, their interiors have been stripped a bit. So it's hard to know, or some people are arguing, it's hard to know what the interior really looked like other than we got some blueprints and some stuff in some books. So it's a little vague is what people are arguing. But I do know that all right, for Atelier's purposes, what they did is they put these boxes, these, these shaped plates in. I guess they're supposed to imply 
ammo storage boxes, but that's really not what the ammo cases would have looked like, so it's very vague as to what that really is. I'm kind of thinking they're just some interesting shapes to make it look busy inside the vehicle, and it's based on nothing. The, um, the Dragon version does have an ammo rack over on this side here, where you can add some shells, storage, but as some people that once I discovered this discussion group that was going on online about this, you know, it only holds like six shells, which this vehicle obviously would hold more than that. So as to where the other shells were and what the arrangement for ammunition storage, more needs to be done on that. Because uh, kind of vague, even with the drag, yeah, I guess even with the dragon kit, it's not really clear there either. There's also some fold down seats that Dragon does have in their kit that um, would be here for the crew sitting and operating the cannon. So, but since I'm already in production of building this, <laughs> um, I'm going to figure this out as I go. Um, we'll see. Because in my case, it was just, I decided I want to build this. It's been sitting on my shelf for a while. I want to build this. And I didn't really think about it. I just started building it, having a good old time. And then went, hmm, that's odd. <laughs> I wonder what that's about. Um, anyway. That said, I'm going to work with what I got and go from there. So here's the undercarriage with all the interesting fiddly bits. And there's a lot of fiddly bits to this. It looks like Dragon also has a lot of fiddly bits to theirs too. But hey, I didn't find it that painful to put together. I know I did when I was younger, and that's probably why this kit was sitting in my stash for so long because of nerves about putting that suspension together, but it really wasn't bad at all. So, go figure. And then the upper side of this, I'm going to paint and maybe add some details to that, because it would have been storage of uh, like like a MP40 and some gas, can, uh, gas mass canisters would have been in there. That sort of thing. And I'll think about that as well. I'm also thinking about <laughs> just putting a tarp over the tarp. Wow, my Rhode Island, ah, my Rhode Island accent's very strong there. The tarp over the top. <laughs> so we'll see about that. So let's look at the instruction sheet. In typical artillery fashion, you get your, and testers for that matter, you get your parts breakdown there, which is handy. And they have the different, you know, the circle tree, the star tree, and the square tree not my favorite way of doing it but hey you know and on the other side you get your like I said how to do weathering which is kind of big back at that time period that testers like putting these things out you know is your history lesson here on the vehicle yeah it gives you a whole lot of you know, the story about that, which I think I summed it up <laughs> very quickly. <laughs> so, all right, I can, add you, I can add this, that the maximum speed was 53 miles per hour on the road and 19 miles per hour cross country, a range of 375 miles, which was improved to 625 miles. Not bad. You know, here's your instructions here for how to put, if I can get that. So the, the suspension is a bit tricky, but it's not terrible. I got this all discombobulated here. Just got to pay attention. And the additional photos and all the box photos help with some of this construction. There are some pieces I found to be kind of awkward and confusing like these I don't know if they're mud flaps or whatever but those parts getting them angled right had a, had a tricky part with that just a heads up you know and then you get that interior which is kind of limited you, know, you get the driving positions but not a whole lot else like I showed you and then you start working on the upper hull parts and the fenders Got some jerry cans. 
Lots of unique storage bits. And then we get on to assembling the gun. Yeah, there's a lot involved Oops. with the cannon here. And so forth there. And they don't give you a whole lot of information for painting. I mean, they do mention that standard uh, German military equipment in the la later half of uh, the Second World War would have been painted in overall dark yellow. And that secondary colors of red, brown, and olive green were often sprayed over that base color, the dark yellow, you know, and different types of patterns and discretion of the unit commanders once they got out into the field. But this kit is basically marketing this as just an overall dark yellow vehicle, which, to be honest, is not that bad looking. And this is the later version. There's an earlier version of this uh, Ahmed car with this configuration. So the, the earlier version could have been in North Africa, but this is the later version, which would have been in Europe only. So... So you're kind of limited to Eastern and Western Front, maybe Italy, with this. Anyway. But you can look look up online and get some other options and see what other types of painting options and marking options that are there. Uh, this just gives you a license plate and some German crosses and the, uh, the stencil here with technical data. That's all you get with this kit. And to be honest, since it's been sitting in my basement for quite a while, not sure those decals are really going to behave. <laughs> uh, I'm going to do what I can with them. Pray that I have a lot of extra decals sitting around. You know, I can kind of come up with uh, some options. And the other thing is that there are plenty of companies that make um, decal sets for this and other German army cars like the Puma, which Testers Italeri also put out. Well, Italeri anyway. And I think, I believe Tamiya is putting out that car now through their name oh, it's still the Italian mold and that's something I go look into and I may do that build that right after this and no, we'll see since this is fun I'm assuming the Puma will be equally fun a uh, difference with the Puma it's got the turret with a 50 millimeter cannon in it which is kind of the epitome of armored cars for that period so we'll see if I get to that in an upcoming video uh, so that's where I am with this right now. Um, like I said, I'm going to try to paint some of that interior, get this thing kind of ready to move on to the next stages. And then I'm debating what kind of crew or what kind of scene I might do with it. Oops, somebody just went flying. Yeah, I'm kind of... <laughs> when I'm in the middle of working, it's kind of... I, I, I'd like to play with all my toys when I'm working, as you can see. So I'm debating this kind of a crew, either this or the Puma, you know. That's one possibility. Otherwise, I'm looking at some, yeah. <laughs> the possibility of using some crewmen like this. This is coming from the, where did I put it? I think it's right here. This is a nice kit to get. The German Sturm artillery crew. You can also use these guys for tanks. Just paint them differently in the black uniforms, which is what I'm doing for armored cars. But they give you a nice assortment here. You know, you got the guys in the early war berets, and you got the late war um, baseball cap design, for lack of a better term, there, and the side cap. So it's you know, so these guys can be later on, and you got the ones at the beginning. Of course, you could change the headgear and kind of work these to be whatever. But anyhow, so those are some things I'm looking into here with this kit, and uh, we'll see how it goes. And hopefully I will uh, have some updates for you soon on this, and then we'll see what I move on to next. Okay, so that's the model building workshop for today. I uh, hope you had fun watching. Keep on building. Stay out of trouble, right? <laughs> All right, we'll see you soon. Just show you some more of that weird interior. I mean, first glance is not too bad, but I don't know. We'll see how it comes out. All right. Take care.